Today I'm going to share everything I know about creatine. I've used creatine myself, so I have direct experience with its effects on the body. We'll talk about the good and bad things that come with using creatine. Your body naturally makes a little bit of creatine, an amino acid that helps give energy, especially to your muscles. But it only makes a small amount, so that's where adding creatine through supplements becomes useful. So what does creatine do for sports and exercise? And what about problems like putting on weight or stomach issues? Are these real concerns? Keep watching, and I'll tell you more important stuff I found out about creatine. Let's dive into the science of creatine. It's spread out in your body, but 95% of it is in your muscles. You can get creatine from eating things like red meat and seafood. The main job of creatine in your body is to help with energy. The more energy you have, the better you can perform in sports, which helps you get stronger. But even with the creatine you get from food and what your body makes, it's still not enough to get the full benefits. That's why many people choose to take extra creatine. Some also take it to help with certain health issues, like heart disease and muscle problems, which I'll explain more about soon. Let's look at the main reasons people take creatine supplements. Increased body mass. When you add more creatine into your muscles, it can lead to a heavier body, but not because creatine directly grows muscles. Instead, creatine makes your muscles keep more water, which is called water retention. It's pretty common to see someone gain between two to five pounds. In the first week, they start taking creatine because of this. This extra water in the muscles isn't a bad thing. Although your muscles aren't getting bigger right away, this extra water is important for muscle growth later on. Also, creatine helps you gain weight by building actual muscle mass. This supplement is really good at making you stronger and more able to endure long workouts. This means you can exercise more and build bigger muscles. Since muscles weigh more than fat, even a little bit of muscle gain against fat loss can make you weigh more. As you gain muscle and lose fat, your body looks tighter and the water weight doesn't stand out as much. So yes, creatine can make you gain weight, but it's because of muscle, not fat, so there's no need to worry. Improves athletic performance. Early research shows that taking creatine supplements can make you stronger and increase your muscle size when you lift weights or do other intense workouts. These studies also found that younger people, around 20 years old, tend to see the most benefits. Scientists think that creatine helps your body use its energy better during exercise and helps muscles grow. Creatine isn't just good for any exercise. It's especially great for activities that need a lot of strength and quick power, like lifting heavy weights or sprinting. This is because creatine helps your body make more of a special kind of energy called ATP, which is super important for short, intense activities. One study that lasted six weeks showed that people taking creatine could lift about 5% more weight in a single bicep curl. Another study on weight training showed that creatine users could squat and bench press more weight than before. However, for long distance running or cycling, which need a lot of stamina but not quick bursts of power, creatine might not help as much. Still, it could make your training sessions better, and over time, this can actually help you improve your endurance. Repairs damage. After injury, studies have found that taking creatine can help protect muscles from damage and speed up the recovery of an athlete after getting hurt. Plus, creatine might work like an antioxidant after a tough workout, which could help lessen muscle cramps. It could also help heal the brain and other injuries faster. Besides these fitness benefits of creatine, two of which I've seen for myself, there are more possible health perks to taking it. For example, it might help improve conditions like muscle dystrophy. I'll talk more about this soon. Other possible uses of creatine, deficiency syndromes, Creatine is a substance your body naturally makes, and it's important for various bodily functions. For example, a young man weighing about 70 kilograms, around 154 pounds, would typically have between 120 to 140 grams of creatine stored in his body. How much you have can vary based on how much muscle you have and the type of muscle fibers you have. Not having enough creatine is linked to several health issues including chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, depression, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, MS, muscle loss, fibromyalgia, and osteoarthritis. While taking extra creatine might help with these conditions, 
There's still a need for more research to confirm its effectiveness. However, increasing creatine levels in the brain with supplements has shown promise in reducing seizures, easing symptoms of autism, and improving movement disorders. Muscular dystrophy. People with muscular dystrophy often have less creatine in their muscles, which can be linked to muscle weakness. Research has found that using creatine supplements can lead to a small improvement in muscle strength compared to those who don't take it. Taking creatine for short to medium periods, like eight to 16 weeks, is generally well accepted by people with muscular dystrophies. These studies suggest that daily creatine intake during this time can help increase muscle strength and decrease the fatigue associated with muscular dystrophy. However, it's important to note that not all research findings are in agreement on this. Reduce risk of heart disease. If you're dealing with high levels of triglycerides or fats in your blood, you might want to consider creatine supplements. Research that includes people with heart failure shows that adding creatine to their routine alongside standard medical treatment allowed them to exercise longer without getting tired. In a study with 20 individuals with heart failure, taking creatine for a short period, in addition to their usual medicine, helped them gain weight and increase muscle strength. Creatine is also known to lower homocysteine levels in the blood. High levels of this amino acid are linked to a greater risk of heart disease, including heart attacks and strokes. Speaking of muscle-related symptoms, there's another disease that is characterized by such and thus benefits from creatine. That is none other than Parkinson's disease. A noticeable issue for those with Parkinson's disease is a decline in muscle health, which includes reduced muscle size and strength and increased tiredness. According to research, individuals with Parkinson's who added creatine to their diet saw improvements in their ability to exercise and their stamina. Another study noted that those taking creatine felt better mood-wise and even reduced their dependence on medication compared to those who didn't use the supplement. Having talked about the positives of creatine, it's important to also look at the downsides to give you a full picture before you decide to start taking creatine supplements. Let's explore the potential drawbacks. Side effects of creatine. Let me start off by saying, creatine is generally a safe supplement to use. However, there have been some side effects reported. It's wise to use creatine under a healthcare provider's guidance due to these possible side effects. The reported side effects include muscle cramps, muscle strains and pulls, stomach upset, diarrhea, dizziness, and high blood pressure. It's also worth mentioning that some of these issues might stem from taking too much of certain vitamins, like too much vitamin C leading to diarrhea. If there were serious problems with creatine, they would be widely reported in the media and online. Have you ever taken creatine? Did you notice any side effects? Share your experiences in the comments. But for safety, I suggest taking creatine only if you're a healthy adult without any kidney issues. Also, make sure to buy from trustworthy brands. Creatine, like testosterone, is a natural compound your body makes, and both play a key role in muscle growth. So while you're thinking about increasing your creatine levels, don't forget about your testosterone levels too. I'll be talking more about that soon. Dosing, the right amount of creatine intake is crucial to unlock its full benefits. Your body naturally makes around one to two grams of creatine daily, which falls short of the amount recommended for muscle building. The International Society of Sports Nutrition provides a guideline on how to safely dose creatine monohydrate, ensuring you get the most out of it without overdoing it. Loading dose, start with 0.3 grams per kilogram of body weight per day for five to seven days, divided into four doses throughout the day. Maintenance dose, follow it up with three to five grams per day thereafter for up to five years. Bonus content, for everyone who stayed until the end of the video, Here's the extra info on creatine I promised. This is key information that everyone considering creatine should know about, giving you an edge in understanding how it works and how to use it effectively. What is the best type of creatine supplement? When it comes to supplements, there's a lot of variation in quality. For creatine specifically, creatine monohydrate comes highly recommended. There are many supplements out there that might seem appealing, but a lot of them don't deliver what they promise. Pre-workout supplements are a typical example of these less reliable products. They might claim to contain creatine, among other nutrients, but often they don't include enough to actually be effective. 
So your best bet is definitely powder form. It's not just cost effective. You also have the flexibility to mix it with various healthy foods and drinks. What are the best natural sources of creatine? Just like our bodies make creatine, you can also find this compound in certain foods. Favorites include beef, pork, herring, and salmon. If you were to eat a raw pound of beef or salmon, you'd get about one to two grams of creatine from it. There's some worry about creatine because of stories about kidney damage and liver issues. But what's the real story behind these concerns? Let's dive into the facts to uncover the truth. Does creatine affect the kidneys and liver? It's true that taking creatine can lead to a slight increase in blood creatinine levels, a substance doctors often look at when checking for kidney or liver issues. However, it's important to know that higher creatine levels don't necessarily mean there's a risk to your liver or kidneys. Creatine is among the most thoroughly researched sports supplements out there. And as of now, there's no evidence to suggest that its use in healthy individuals causes damage to these organs. Nevertheless, if you have a history of liver or kidney problems, it's wise to approach creatine supplements with caution. The best course of action is to consult your doctor for advice on whether or not you should use creatine. The advantages of using creatine are numerous, with noticeable impacts on achieving a larger and healthier body. However, it's essential not to stop there. To truly maximize your gains, you need to go the extra mile. If you liked what you heard today, hit that thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe for more Honest Fitness Talk. Here's to feeling good, having fun, and making fitness work for you. Until next time, keep moving, stay positive, and take care of yourself.